Out of all the vehicles we have around here as daily drivers, this El Camino is probably the most fun. We're going to show you why. It's a truck, but it's also a car. As you know with El Caminos, this particular one is a 1978 flavor. It's got Camaro rally wheels on it. Some nice, just daily driver tires. This whole thing is set up as a nice daily driver. We have the bed tie downs because we don't have any other place to tie things down in this bed. With El Camino beds, there's not really a lot of tie down points because they're just made for light hauling. Some of the factory options would have some tie down clips in certain locations on the bed, but this one doesn't. So the only thing we have are these side rails, and one of the nice features of these side rails is these are adjustable. You can slide these wherever you want them and run your hook through and then tight clamp them down again, and they hold fast. And that's a feature that's only just coming back into vogue in pickup trucks, but it was available in 1978. So we've got those for light hauling. And of course, it's got a normal pickup truck tailgate, but your handle's on the inside. And it's a nice lightweight tailgate. So, you know, if your girlfriend only weighs 90 pounds, she can open it up. And it closes nice, too. It's not like a big, heavy truck tailgate. The other thing, nice thing about hauling in these El Caminos is if you're reaching over the bedside, it's kind of nice and low, and you can reach all the way to the middle if you're even short like me. So. It's, you know, it's, it's great for kind of just running around town and doing all kinds of light stuff. Uh, this particular model has been just repainted and kind of made to look a little nice as a daily driver. We haven't put a lot of work into it. The interior is where you really want to be in this because it's pretty comfy. As you can see, there's a lot of room. There's a lot of foot room and the dashboard is kind of pushed way back. So you have lots of room, just like the Malibus and the, and the Malibu wagons. It's your... It's your typical G-body car, though well, technically this is an A-body um, because the D terminology didn't start until the 80s. Um, but this has a really comfortable interior, and it may not look like it, but the seats and everything are real comfortable. They are kind of form-fitted, even though it's a split bench seat. It has the dual armrest features, which is pretty rare. Most of these only have the single armrest, and they either have a complete bench seat or they have uh, just the 60-40 the split where the driver's comes over to here. And although you can haul three people in this, it's better for two because the third person in the middle is kind of, well, they've kind of got to straddle that gap there. And, you know, their backrest is armrests and they've just got a lap belt here. But it's great for just running around town hauling two people. We'll show you more of the interior later. Right now, let's show you what's under the hood. So this car is a 350 V8 model, which they did not make a lot of factory. But the 350 was available in 1978 and 1979 on the El Caminos and the wagons and some police car models. But it's actually pretty rare to find a factory 350 version. Most of what you see here under the hood is actually original factory, the air conditioning. Although we've replaced and updated parts, it's pretty much all factory. The air cleaner and the headers are the only thing under here that's been replaced. And I don't recommend headers for a daily driver because some people think they want a loud exhaust until they have to drive around with them every day. And you get that drone in your ears, you know, and it kind of gets annoying, but they're there. So previous owner put them on, so we work with them. And it's not the factory air cleaner, but it is what it is. It's easier to find air cleaners for these, and I guess they do breathe a little better. But 
everything here is factory it's got you know all the original factory uh setup arrangement of uh this did not come with a smog pump or anything back then it, it doesn't have any of those extra emissions things so all of the minor vacuum things you see here are original um the ac works of course because this is florida and uh our ac cars work and of course the windshield wipers and the washers work and everything because this is a daily driver and one of the most important things on a daily driver is that everything works so let's take you inside and give you the inside tour one more thing on the outside i forgot to talk about the safety on this particular car if you look at these big five mile an hour safety bumpers in the 70s a lot of people don't like them but one of the nice features of these is there's actually little shock absorbers between the bumper and the frame of course this is a big heavy steel bumper but if you get in an accident those shock those shock absorbers will compress a little bit and push the bumper back in to absorb some of that impact before it actually impacts the frame on your car and starts twisting and bending things so that's a good thing other thing is you got this long hood here as a crumple zone and of course in the back you got a huge crumple zone because it's a pickup truck um you got the same bumper in the back big metal wraparound bumper which is pretty nice some people put the roll pans on them and it takes away a lot of your initial impact and uh, collision safety but we've got the original bumpers and shock absorbers on this thing so again if somebody hits you it absorbs a little bit of that shock before it gets into your frame and your actual crumple zones so nice feature it's actually it's actually a fairly safe car you got sidebars in here rollover is probably the only weak point because it's just you know small roof and small a pillars the b pillars are a little bit bigger but i'm guessing that's probably the weakest point of the whole thing inside Got a nice big entry door. This is the same door frame as the Monte Carlo and uh, the two-door Malibus. The glass is different because it curves here. It'd be flat up and down on the Monte, or flatter on the Monte Carlo or the Malibu. Um, but you got a nice big entry point here. Oh, and electric, electric driver's seat, which is also a rare option in 1978. And these, all these options work. It's a six-way seat. And... Uh, very easy to get in and out of, especially if you're wearing a hat. Sun visors work. Let's take you in here and give you a little bit of a tour. We have uh, standard convenience options. We got your heat and AC here, which is an easy reach of driver or passenger. We have the radio in the center, which is also within easy reach of driver and passenger. There's an aftermarket unit. The original one was an AM FM, but that's been taken out. Now this has dual remote mirrors. This is your passenger mirror here, and you can control it from the driver's seat, which is great for things like towing or switching drivers. The driver controls from the door right here. It's got power locks, manual windows, which are good because there's less things to break. And you got all your controls here within easy reach of the driver. You got your windshield washer, washer wiper here. You got your headlights, and that's, you know, your standard stalks. This is a tilt wheel design which is pretty nice for comfort, if you like to control that. Uh, standard pedal layout and everything. You got a foot pedal e-brake that you know, keeps the center open if you want to haul a third person. The gauge cluster for 1978 is really clear and it's got nice visible round gauges. And it's actually kind of modern looking, especially for the, for the 70s. This is the first year of this style gauge cluster in the A slash G bodies. You got your warning lights over here. The only lights over here are the turn signals and your high, and no, just your turn signals. Your high beam is here, your choke light, and your brake and seat belt. And there's some empty slots up here. They're used in some other later models of cars for other things, convenience options and such. But uh, this has the full gauge cluster layout. It's got the tack with the clock, little clock inset there. Uh, and you got your fuel gauge, your fuel gauge, and your voltage gauge, and your temperature, and your oil pressure. Of course, the speedometer. This has 32,000 miles on it. Um, it's probably 132. I mean, it's most likely 132. If you look at the brake pedal, it's actually not that terribly worn, and the gas pedal isn't either. Um, we don't know the exact history of this car, but we're kind of guessing that it's 132. Glove box is an easy reach of the driver, too. If you reach over, you know, you get pulled over and you got to get your paperwork out of there. You can reach it pretty easy. 
But the biggest thing about this thing, and the most surprising thing if you use this as a daily driver, is you'll find the interior is actually rather spacious, especially for a mid-sized vehicle, which is what this is. Uh, the Malibus are kind of known for their spacious interiors. Uh, they intentionally pushed the dashboard back as far as they could towards the engine so that you get as much space here as possible. The steering wheel is really, it's comfortable. This is the original wheel, not the original horn button. That would have a uh, El Camino symbol, but we just picked whatever was cheapest and put it on there so it looked okay. Column shift, of course, it's a three-speed automatic in this car. If it was a manual, it'd be down here. But they didn't offer the manual transmission on the 350 cubic inch engine. Um, so any 350 you find factory, it's going to be an automatic. Uh, this is a three-speed. It has a 2.41 axle in the rear, which is great for highway mileage. Um, not so great on acceleration, but with the engine, it kind of makes up for it and can keep up with today's modern traffic, which is great for a daily driver. So very nice, comfortable spacious interior. We do have to do something with that driver's seat, but it's on our list. We've kind of been doing some work on this thing as time goes on, and there's a playlist on our channel if you're interested of various things we're doing, and we'll add to that as time goes on. Behind the seats, now this is a split, uh, not a split bench, but it's completely split down the middle. It's not buckets, but it's the seats are completely separate. Because, you know, electric driver's seat. But there's plenty of room back here to store your groceries and whatever you carry. We carry our tools under the bed there in the smuggler's hole or whatever they call it. This is a cargo net for if we're hauling loose stuff in the bed. We just throw that across the bed and hook her to the tie downs. Your spare tire's back there on the other side under the bed. This is your bumper jack up here. And there's a plate somewhere around there for the base plate for the bumper jack. And there's plenty of room for all the various things that you want to haul back here. And um, even with our tools and everything, there's still some extra space back here for other stuff. So if you're worried about hauling stuff in an El Camino and having it, you know, lockable storage and all that, it's actually not too bad. And as you can see, this seat isn't just shoved right up forward. This is a normal driving position for, well, me and I'm, I'm, what am I, 5'10". So as you can see, there's plenty of foot room and there's still plenty of room back here. Now on the El Caminos, the 5th Gen El Caminos, this floorboard, as you can see, there's kind of a footwell here. That's because this floorboard is taken out of the wagon up until you get back in there. So this is actually the passenger footwell for the wagon because the back seat would be here. So you've got this, you know, nice extra space that some of the uh, Rancheros and other El Caminos don't necessarily have because, especially the early Rancheros, they just come straight down here. But there's supposed to be a carpet thing hanging there that kind of conceals all that, but we don't have that, and, you know, it's not too visible from the outside when you're looking at it, so uh, it's pretty nice. This car does have dual exhaust. That's not factory. Uh, somebody put a new exhaust on it, but again, for a daily driver, you don't want a loud exhaust. Ask me how I know. But otherwise, this thing really runs and drives great, and we're going to kind of take it for a spin now, and we'll show you what it's like to drive one of these things. So this is a carbureted car. It's got a uh, Quadrajet four barrel. So you do have to pump it a few times if it's been sitting a few days like this one has. So if it's cold, it's gonna take a little bit to crank to start it. When it's warm, it just starts right up. It runs great, it idles great. And uh, even in the winter, we've had this thing up north and we've run it in the snow and everything. And with studded snow tires and it runs great and it starts great even in cold weather of course we've got ac so we're going to just turn that on low we're just going to take a spin and show you how she runs and drives three speed on the column of course it does drive really smooth uh, especially that's what another thing you want in a daily driver it is nice as a little runaround vehicle because just like a pickup truck, you got your exterior storage, but you also got your driving and handling like a passenger car. So we're gonna take her out in the open road here and show you how smooth she drives. Now this has everything working, which again, is something you really want in a daily driver because if you get in the rain, you want the wipers to work, you want your washers to work and your mirrors and your headlights and everything else 
everything works really good. Especially at night, cars of this era are known more for their dim headlights compared by today's standards. But this particular one does really good and we haven't had much trouble with it. The high beams are really nice and bright, the low beams are, you know, about what you'd expect. Uh, it is, when you get going up today's modern speeds, when you get up to 70 mile an hour, it can get pretty easy to overdrive your headlights, but this, these cars were never really made to go that particularly fast, and you can, if you want, upgrade them with LED headlights, so that is an option. We haven't chosen to done, do that yet because this is a kind of low budget, you know, everyday driver, so it, power is there if you want it. Right now we're going about 45, and you know, if you slam it down, it'll still take off on you get that passing speed if you want it. Um, so it will keep up with modern traffic. We're going to take her down a dirt back road here and show you how well she handles. It's actually pretty smooth and nice compared to say a pickup truck or a lot of other things, but the suspension in this car is in really good shape and it's been rebuilt, all the bushings and joints and everything have been repaired or replaced over the years so it's actually probably about as close to brand new as you could expect to find in one of these cars anymore well daily driver version anyway it doesn't have as many rattles and bangs as you'd expect from a vehicle of this age you can kind of hear some of our tools and things banging around behind the seats just a little bit but it doesn't have many squeaks and rattles is one of the things that can really annoy you in a daily driver sometimes. Brakes are nice, which is another thing you want. We do a little bit of small hauling and towing in this thing, and the brakes are good enough for that too. This thing is rated to haul 5,000 pounds from the factory. We have a small trailer hitch on it. We don't tow anything real heavy, but it does real good with that too, and the visibility is great. We're kind of sitting in a complete glass box here, which is really nice. If you kind of take a look as we spin the camera around here, you can see how nice the visibility really is. Pretty much anywhere you look, you can see out. Even when you're hauling things, you have nice visibility. The mirrors, although the mirrors look small, you do have nice visibility sitting in the driver's seat. And of course you have that dual adjustment from the driver's seat, as we showed earlier. You got your adjustment knobs. So you don't even have to have your passenger roll down the window and adjust your mirror for you. She drives really nice and smooth, especially on uh, nicely paved roads. It's a very, very nice daily driver. It feels like driving a car. And of course you got that pickup head behind you, which is really convenient. got some rumble strips up here and we're gonna show you how nice it goes over those it, you can still feel them but it doesn't shake rattle and roll like some things like some vehicles do there's one set just kind of what you'd expect here's another set not too bad it's a very uh, well put together vehicle and it drives nice and smooth But most importantly, for a daily driver, it's safe, it's got the power we need, it's got hauling capacity, and it always starts. This thing is reliable. Uh, it's bone stock, and I think that's one of the big contributing factors to it. It doesn't have any power adders or anything to all that hassle and uh, just add more things to break. Um, everything's factory, so very easy to get parts for very easy to repair or something does go wrong but every time we need it it's there it starts and it takes us where we want to go without any trouble we've had very very little trouble with this vehicle over the time we've owned it and we're going to keep driving it because it's really reliable and it's fun to drive
the engine on this isn't too noisy even with the headers she still runs pretty nice and quiet but it runs really smooth like we said it's carbureted four barrel quadrajet it's tuned really nice and it's probably about the closest thing you can get to fuel injection on one of these older vehicles because it's got the primaries and secondaries and of course the secondaries don't open until you really get your foot down into it this thing still has some of the original factory chalk marks on there which is interesting to see on some of these things um, it's it's very factory all over uh, like we said the battery tray has been replaced and a couple other things but the layout and everything under here is really pretty much all original it's still got the original hood insulation and everything which helps contribute to that quietness um, it's got the nice original radiator and everything she runs really nice and smooth and these are just uh, ordinary car tires they're nothing special I believe these are off of a Camaro and the wheels too. We would have different, probably color-coded uh, rally wheels, slightly different. The uh, oval holes would be proper for 1978, but she's in daily driver shape. As you can see, we kind of use her. There's some scuffs and scrapes and battle scars and things just because we actually use it as a running, driving kind of uh, light hauler pickup truck. Sometimes we tow this trailer with it. Uh, we'll pull things like empty car dollies, things like that. We have this coating in the bed, just kind of, uh, you know, you don't have to feel bad about knocking things around in there. It won't scratch any paint. There's nothing to get scratched. We have, of course, this rubber mat under here to help protect everything so it doesn't smash the bed in or anything like that. One of the big inconveniences as a daily driver on this thing is probably the fuel fill. It opens upward, which is kind of you know inconvenient for things like pouring gas cans in and things like that i'll show you kind of how inconvenient it is if you try to want to fill a gas can like this there is a mod you can do where you can take this cover here and you can move the hinges over to this side but this has uh factory air, not factory they would have had factory air shocks like all the el caminos of that era they all came with air shocks and the air fills right here Right now it has airbags in it because it sags a little bit with the Malibu shocks that somebody else put in. And the air shocks tend to wear out pretty fast. So we didn't put air shocks in, we put airbags in. And this is the fill point for that, same as the factory fill point for the air shocks. So to move this over here, it kind of gets in the way of your hinges. So you have to move this over and you got to uh, move, of course, this whole, rearrange this whole cap and everything. But it can be done. But if you want to fill it up, you can only get your fuel can up about this high before it hits the top of the lid. It's not so bad when you're filling it from a pump, but it still is an inconvenience because you can't get it, you know, you're kind of moving around in here and messing with the lid, but it is what it is. And as far as inconveniences go for a daily driver, I'll take that small one over a lot of some of the other things. It is very nice to drive uh, like I said it feels like you're driving a car up front but you can haul things in the back here I think it's a 16 16 gallon tank 18 gallon tank something like that with the 350 it does tend to go through gas a little bit faster uh, but we do get decent gas mileage with it we drove this thing up and down the eastern seaboard 1300 miles which there's a video on our playlist on our channel for this car about that if you're interested in seeing that and that just you know shows really what this car can do and especially with the highway gearing in the back it did really good when you're turning on the highway I think you're going about 25 2700 rpm which isn't terrible some of the vehicles I've driven the older vehicles you know they tend to turn higher rpm because they have higher axle ratios in the back but this works really good for everyday street and highway driving. It's geared right and it handles really nice. Some of these things are known for sloppier steering in the G bodies, but we've tightened up the steering box and made sure all the slop is removed and everything. And it handles really good. Uh, the, when, when they're new and when everything is maintained and repaired, the G bodies actually handle really good uh, regardless of what you might hear, and uh, although they kind of sometimes look like a plain Jane car, you know, they have a lot of smooth lack of character lines and things like that. And a lot of the base models, you know, they don't lack all the chrome trim and things, but 
Uh, they're really a, a nice car when you actually get down and drive them. Now this originally was a Conquista model, so it had the Beltline chrome trim that would have run along this just ever so light character line here and up over the wheel wells. And we opted not to put it back on again because it's a daily driver and it's just you know one more thing that we'd have to install and work around and things like that. But um, as far as this goes for a well, basically a Malibu pickup, it's really nice. It's kind of roomy inside, regardless of what it looks like. It's really comfortable. And most importantly, in a daily driver, it is fun to drive. Because it handles nice, and it keeps up with today's traffic. And if you gun it, you got some power back there, too. So, the fun factor is definitely there. And for us especially, out of all of our fleet, this is probably the funnest one that we have. Uh, the most fun to drive uh, It's it's kind of you know, it's lower than than your standard truck and it's basically a sport truck and uh, People like sport trucks because you know, they're 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 kind of low and they're powerful and It feels like you're driving more of a sports car, but you can still haul stuff. So that's what you get in your Standard El Camino and that's what we have here. It's just a great everyday driver and hauler so if you're thinking about buying a old or classic daily driver, an El Camino is a really good, practical, fun option. If you don't agree with me, leave it down in the comments. Or if you do agree with me, leave it down in the comments. If you have one, if you just want to chat about your El Camino, maybe you're thinking about buying an El Camino, maybe you hate El Caminos, leave it down in the comments. Always feel free to like and subscribe because it helps the channel, it makes us happy, and more importantly, it just <laughs> it's free. More importantly, it's free. It doesn't cost you nothing. Remember, grass is always greener over the septic tank.